Well, it's nice to see you and uh, this beautiful way today, way down in autumn like this soon to be winter. Now we know that's true because that's the way the calendar works. Uh, we know how to look for the coming of cold weather and after that coming of spring, summer and so forth because we've learned that uh, over the years of our lives. Well, this is, this is one of the things that Jesus is talking about today when he mentions to, to people talking to the scribes and the Pharisees, he says, now, why is it that you have not caught on to this? You know you know how to predict the weather. You know when the, uh, the sky's red, that there's a, uh, uh, in the morning, that there's a storm coming. You know if the sky's red at night, there's, there's fair weather. You know those things? Why is it you don't understand the meaning of the times? And so the times is really what I'd like to talk about a little bit today. Since Christmas is a, a time, when if you're like me, you're mindful of, of, of each passage, a passage of time, as well as previous Christmas, Christmas, other times. Times when you were a child, times when uh, there were people in your life that are no longer there, uh, perhaps anticipation of times to come. But we're certainly aware of time, I, I, I find, uh, at, at, this, uh, at this time late in the year. As, uh, move deeper into home and in winter. So I'd like to read for you. I've got three uh, quotes here from scripture I'd like to share with you about, about time. This is from Galatians. Says, but when the time had fully come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who are under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons and daughters. Starts out with when the time is fully come. Uh, I'd like you to file that little uh, sequence of verse of words away. When the time had fully come. That's the first I want to share with you. And the second is from uh, Romans chapter 5. While we were yet helpless, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. At the right time, God acted. <coughs> Third and last one is one I've already referred to, but I want to do it again because it's so important. And Jesus is talking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and he says to them, When it is evening, you say, It will be fair weather, and the sky is red. In the morning, it will be stormy weather, but the sky is red and, uh, and, and threatening. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the time. What Jesus is suggesting there is that if we're paying attention in our lives, we're able to interpret uh, the world, life, and the unfolding of the world in a way that can be very helpful to us and whereby we can kind of have a sense of the movement of, of the Holy Spirit uh, in the world. So one of the great questions that I've always given time to thought to is, why did Jesus come exactly when he did? What was, the, what was God's uh, timing there? Uh, what, was, what was the purpose at that, at that moment? Why not now? Well, in the back of it, there are some practical things you can observe, like uh, uh, the world had just uh, uh, opened up because the Mediterranean had become uh, the, the Roman Sea, and there was transportation to all parts of, uh, of, of Asia Minor and even to Europe. And, as far as Great Britain, there was a, a transport through the desert on the camels. There was all kinds of ways of, of, of movement that had not been available before. That's one reason. Maybe that's, that's something God had in mind in scheduling Jesus' arrival when he did. Uh, another might be that maybe God perceived that the world had advanced in a certain way, in a, in a certain kind of spiritual way, that there were enough people who had an appreciation for the movement of God. Uh, they, they, they had become conscious of, of the world of the Spirit in such a way that, that Jesus came down. It might make a big difference in their lives and in the word that they spread. Well, those are people, but of course we really don't know and we never will know. That's not something human beings are capable of grasping. But we can look at the signs of the times. And this is what Jesus was intent upon when he was talking to the scribes and the Pharisees. If you look back, he said, 
You remember, you remember what God did with the, the Pharaoh and the, uh, the crossing of the Red Sea, the Exodus, bringing up the, the, his people to a new land. You remember that story? Jesus is saying to them, and of course they all did. That was important for them. But they didn't know how to apply that. That the purposes of God have always been the same, to bring people together, to be him, to be God's people, and to have people aware of the, the power and wonders of and the unfolding of, of the earth and the Holy Spirit. That's always been God's purposes. But the people of Jesus' time had forgotten all of that. They could not see in what God was doing now in, in, in Jesus, this coming of the new word in this new way. They could not see in that the work of God, because they had forgotten what God had done before and what God's purposes were before. That all people are God's people. The whole world was created by God. That the idea of being a, uh, being God's people means that you live in a, in a, in a way, in a covenant relationship with each other, where people are always treated fairly and kindly and, and with love. That was the purpose back in Exodus days, and it's never changed. But to say it again, that was that was the difficulty that the people of Jesus' time were having understanding who He was. They had forgotten those basic tenets of God and basic purposes that God has always held out to His people. And so we have to say then, well, all right, how, how does that apply to us now? How, how is that going to be helpful to us now? Well, the place to begin is to recognize that in God's in God's creation, uh, there are really basically there are two time zones. Uh, one of them is the uh, the idea of, of living in this this world in which we live, where things are always seems like evolving and changing and becoming and growing. And time around the clock seems to turn around and you tear the pieces off the pieces off the calendar. Time moves on. There's that time zone in God's creation. But the other one has to do with that which is to come. That the the, the purposes of God are yet to be revealed uh, in their fullness as they are in, in God's creating a time that we say is not quite yet, but really is yet. And that is eternity. Because that is that's that's as much a part of creation as is the uh, this piece of wood right here. The world out there. That God has created for, for people who know God and who follow Christ this understanding that life is actually not fleeting, but permanent. That life is not limited, but forever. And so this, in this time zone, which, interestingly enough, you and I all share. We don't just live in this world. But as Christians, we live in this world and in the world to come at the same time. Because if we know Christ, then we're already a part of it. And this is the big difference in, in, in the life of a person who is faithful in following our Lord someone who is not mindful of that. Because if you, if you don't care about that world, that world that, that is forever, that is eternal, that's already created and living right now inside of us, if you don't care about that, then you, what are you missing out on? You're missing out on the most important part about life. Is it being to live in this world and understanding that everything has purpose and, and meaning and, and direction and uh, in, in God's economy and this this other time zone that God lives in with us, where uh, things are all are forever. And so the, the difference is monumental when you look at it that way. And so when Jesus says, why is it you don't understand the meaning of the times? Why is it you don't understand? You know when the uh, crops need to be uh, brought in? You know when the rains are going to come. You know when things are going to be planted. Why should you not understand the purposes of God? And the reason is that we don't understand it is that we've not pursued it in our heart of hearts. We've not looked close enough at the patterns of God's work in the world and with people and with nations. Now, there's no way to forecast what's going to happen uh, in our world. We live in kind of a scary time, if you ask me. Uh, and nobody knows what's going to happen. But on the other hand, there's no reason to be afraid because we are already a part of that other time that God has created, the time that we say is not quite yet but already is, at the same time not quite yet but already is. That, that is where you and I live uh, in, 
perpetuity and forever. And so, praise we care about this world and what happens in it and what happens to the people around us that, uh, that we love and people we don't even know. Uh, that we read about in the paper all the time. We care about those things, but they are not ultimate. What will always prevail in, in creation is the will of God. And the will of God is that all things should come together in a meaning and purpose. But you can't do that without having a spiritual center. You can't have that in your life without knowing Christ in your heart. And so that's why Jesus came into the world. To reaffirm what God had already said at, uh, at the Exodus. To reaffirm what God had already done in introducing the Ten Commandments to us. To reaffirm what God had already done in bringing to us the, uh, the, the very presence of God on the earth, in our hearts, and in the world. And so, we live with the signs of the times. That's it. Anyway, that's what God's doing. That's it every Christmas if we just pay attention. And so in order to really pay attention, we've got to step back from the things of this world that distract us from what Christmas is really about. And I don't know if you drive to Frederick's Road now. Down there, when you park, they've got signs up that say, uh, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy this, Happy Holidays. No mention of Jesus Christ, of course. And that's, that's the kind of world we live in today. And uh, so th those of us who, who are his people and who follow him must carry that with us out into the world because the world doesn't know what's going on. The world at large has no sense of, time, of the times in which we live. The world out there at large has no sense of the purposes of God. And therefore, those of us who do seek him and long for God's coming again in this world, uh, we have to carry that message out because the world doesn't really want to hear it. The world's never wanted to hear it. Remember what happened to Jesus did go. They killed all the children. They tried to kill they killed him. They, anybody who uh, stood in the way of uh, the world moving on as they thought it should be was tortured and uh, suffered for it. Well, that's just the way it goes. But if you know the truth, you have to live by the truth. You can't, you, you can't bear it any other kind of existence. And so that's the good news of the gospel today. And so I, I, I implore you then to be mindful and look for the purposes of God in your life today. What, do you, what is God doing now? What are we, what are you calling to do? What are we as people to be about uh, in God's world? The story's already been told. And God's purposes have been made clear. Uh, and you're called to be part of it. Not just now, but uh, forever. And that's the good news of the gospel for today. Amen.